one that was definitely for me like a huge testimony builder and definitely like one of the biggest pieces of my conversion to the gospel. So I was in my second area, so I'm only out probably like three months at this time, maybe four and a half around that time. And we're in Waianae, not Waianae, excuse me, Waimea in Kona, best place ever. It is the celestial kingdom on the earth. But very, very Hawaiian area, lots of Hawaiian homestead. And we are at church, me and my companion. And this auntie walks up to us and just goes, hey, so my nephew wants to be baptized. And we're just like, well, okay, score. She's like, he wants you to come visit him right after church. Here's his number, call him, set up the appointment. Like, Done. She's like, yeah, he's taken all the missionary lessons before throughout his life. He's ready now. We're like, what on earth? And so we go, and he's in the Hawaiian homestead, and his name is Uncle John Pea. And he is this big old Hawaiian guy. And we walk up, and I'm just thinking, like, okay, like, is this guy just playing with us? Is he just here to, like, bash with us? Like, what's kind of the deal? Because this doesn't happen. And so we go. We knock on the door. He welcomes him in. The most nice, aloha-filled Hawaiian guy ever. And we're just talking, and we're asking him about, like, his life and his experiences and why he wants to be baptized. And it's just a crazy story. So what happened was Uncle John was known in the church his whole life. So he was born, his father was a Catholic, his mother was a member of the church. And so he grew up and it was never like forced which one to do. So some of his family chose to be Mormon, some of his family went with his dad to be Catholic. And he went with his dad because all the rules, he's like teenager, he's like I don't want all these rules, the Mormon church, blah, blah, blah. So he went and did that. And he had a really estranged relationship with his dad. His dad was more abusive and just very hard on him. So he always had a really strained relationship with him to the point where they didn't talk for since Uncle John was probably in his 20s till his father passed away. And at this time, Uncle John's in his probably close to 60. And so really just crazy experience. So we're talking and he knows everything about the church. He shows us this stack that he has and it's every single pamphlet of every missionary that's ever been to him. And he has like a pile. He has a pile of the ones that were like kind of like not so good missionaries they didn't like, didn't get a vibe with, and then the other ones that were really good that he liked. And he'd have them like sign their names on the pamphlets and stuff. And so he got a good joy out of like just missionaries. Nicest guy, so crazy. Single, never married. His sister had two kids, got into trouble with drugs and stuff, so he adopted them. And they were baptized into the church. So Uncle John never remember raised these two kids, his nephews, really his sons, in the church. They both went on missions. And he still was never a member. It's crazy. And so he's known the church his whole life, knows everything about it, just was never baptized, never wanted to make that commitment to the Lord. And so we're visiting, we're like, okay, why of all times now? What's going on? And he, he tells us this story. He was in his garden, he's working, and he's kind of just pondering about life. He's kind of at a point in his life, he doesn't know what's next for him, what to do. And he said that this angel appeared to him. And it was in his dad's image. So basically his dad appeared to him. And he's just in shock. and. All he remembers is his dad saying, I can't move on until you move on. And then Uncle John says he woke up. He didn't know how long he was out, but he was just laying on the grass, kind of like Joseph Smith a little bit. And so we're just like, oh, my goodness. And so he's like, that was my dad in the spirit world, not being able to move on except the work that's been done for him until I move on with my life that we forgive each other for our wrongdoings. And ultimately, that was Uncle John's answer to, I need to change my life, I need to join the church. And so it's just unreal crazy, and we're just hit with the spirit, everyone's in tears, we're just like, oh my gosh. So, mind blown, right? We're driving away, and 
little backstory to all this. My grandfather served in Hawaii in the 1950s, 53 to 55. And I was really close to my grandpa. And so another backstory. Growing up, I was never active in the church. I basically was like a convert. When I got into college, that's when I learned anything about the church, really, even though I was baptized when I was a kid. And my grandpa passed away, and that's kind of what led me to discover the church, I guess. So when I got in the mission called to Hawaii, I was like, wow, he's certain Hawaii. That's crazy. So we're driving away after that incredible spiritual experience. And I just had this crazy impression that there had to be a missionary on the other side of the veil that was sharing the gospel with Uncle John's dad. I had that feeling that I was my grandpa. So all these emotions came flooding in. I'm just like, there's no way. So I prayed and I just got this feeling that I knew. So I emailed my grandmother asking, like, where, where did Grandpa serve exactly? Sure enough, he served in Waimea. So, unreal. And that right there just kind of put everything together. Because when I got on my mission, I was kind of like shell-shocked. What am I doing exactly? But that was a huge turning point on my mission. That's when I really had that solidified testimony. I never looked back from there.